Welcome back. You're watching The Core coming to you live from Channel's television studios in Abuja. We're talking about, uh, we're, we're taking a close look at the poor planning and how that may be contributing to the collapse of tertiary education in Nigeria. And I have my panel right here with me in the studio. And just before we took the break, we were talking to uh, Dr. Benjamin. And Dr. Benjamin, really, when we look at it realistically, the uh, UTME examinations. You have so many young people who are trying to get in, and yet very few of them are going to get in. 1.7 apply, roughly about 500,000 actually get in. Isn't that a symptom of the problem? Well, I was trying to make a point that um, today, ASU is asking for over a trillion naira. Have we asked ourselves how much are we putting into secondary and primary education? Because if the foundation is not strong, the building cannot stand. When a child finishes from secondary school, he goes into university to specialize. He must have learned physics, chemistry, mathematics, or whatever field he wants to go into university to specialize. He's only going there to narrow into a field. The basic work should be done at that level. But to answer your question, 1.7 million. You see, there, are, we, there is a way we play with statistics in Nigeria. There are a lot of variables that we're holding constant. Out of these 1.7 million Nigerians that apply to go into university, how many of them are actually qualified at that point? By the time you begin to do minus plus, you sift out those ones that many of them apply with awaiting results. By the time NECO, YA, whatever, releases their results, a lot of them will not have been qualified. Many of them, even the subject combination at UTME, they get it wrong. By the time you remove all these numbers, you may even be left with fewer than what we're talking about. And then let me give you this information. We have a carrying capacity for universities or tertiary institutions. In the last four years, hardly have we filled up to 80% of this carrying capacity. And this is largely as, as a result of some of the other so many challenges, factors. Uh, so some many of factors. the factors. Yes. All right, well, I want to come to Dr. Melafia because we are talking about funding and how that is not really working out in Nigeria. But before that, I just want to let you know that you can join the conversation on our social media handle. Uh, you can uh, tweet at us. Uh, the Twitter handle is at Channels TV and also at Kadria Ahmed. And you can also use the hashtag NG the core and also on Facebook at channels forum and look to the bottom of the screen because all of your comments will be showing uh, right about there but let's come to Dr. Melafia now back in 2013 when the strike at the time happened there was a lot of back and forth between the federal government and ASU and ASU was saying that they were not going to budge, they were not going to uh, pick up tools until a deposit of about 200 billion naira was raised and deposited in that account. Now, I know that you were not serving at the time, but the central bank has taken on several intervention projects yes. to save education. Federal government cannot do anything. 1.3 trillion is a huge amount of money. Dr. Ezra Quisili had expressed how much money that is. So how can we raise the kind of money that we need to fund the financial deficit in our educational system? Well, thank you, uh, Stanley. Um, I'm worried by the whole approach this, the whole thing has taken. Uh, I think it's a much more systemic problem, and that's why I agreed with uh, Obi here. Uh, in the past, many, many decades ago, we would have set up a commission, a national commission, to look at the whole business of education and how to reframe it and restructure it to meet the needs and demands of a competitive economy in the 21st century. We cannot solve that problem by tinkering here and there or by a kind of moral blackmail, which I'm sorry, Asu, this is what it looks like. And I speak as a sympathizer because I used to be a lecturer in the Nigerian University at Amadou Bende University 
and I also taught in England up to associate professor level. So, doctor, you, you believe this is moral blackmail on behalf of? Well, it looks Lassen? like that because they are over unionized, and and uh, the academic culture is not labor. It's not labor unionism. It has become over unionized, and it is a carryover from the military days. And those were very heroic days where Asu fought the good fight for democracy, for liberty, and for social justice. All well and good, but in a democratic setting, we expect a less blackmail type of approach. Uh, I'm going to come to Professor Ogunyemi, uh, uh, Professor Ogunyemi, because you raised this issue, Professor Ogunyemi.